This is the moment of truth. I don't know if this is gonna work. <laughs> I hope it doesn't break. Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to Motor City Boatworks. Let's get to work. We're back in the boat works and the projects are never ending. But before we get started, I wanna take a moment to thank all of the subscribers of the channel. I really appreciate the comments that a lot of people made on my last episode, YouTube versus my boat building. I never expected to receive the positive feedback that I got from all of you. And I wanna tell you, I really appreciate it. I especially wanna thank our Patreons. They're growing every day. In particular, I wanna point out that we now have a VIP Patreon, someone who has decided to donate to ensure that the channel keeps making episodes. Thank you so much. If you've thought about becoming a Patreon, but you're just not sure, well, let me tell you, now is the time to do it. Workers get access to my detailed material lists, my Da Vinci's notebook, as well as extra video content that's not available on my YouTube channel. The only way to get this is by becoming a worker. Between now and Christmas Day, I'm giving away free signed autographed copies of my classic sailboat restoration book, I'll send you one and a shop decal. You'll support the channel and you'll make a difference with me. Today, we're gonna to be talking about an unusual project that I began in the Boatworks several months ago. We're gonna be talking about designing and building composite dinghy davits. We're back on here. We're talking about uh, second project, dinghy davits, right? So you have a big boat and this boat is just big enough that it needs a dinghy or small rowboat to get to and from the shore, especially if you're out on a mooring or you're on an anchor. That dinghy is gonna go great with this boat, right? And uh, they're designed to go together. And the question becomes is when you're cruising long-term, well, where are you gonna put this nine foot dinghy? Yeah, the thing weighs under hundred pounds. Yeah, it weighs 75 pounds or whatever, but it's nine feet long and has like four and a half foot beam. It's, it's, it's kind of unwieldy. You can't pick it up and move it around. While you can lift it over your head, you don't want to be doing that every day. You throw your back out. At least I will. And my original thought was I was going to put this thing up on the top of the boat. Way up top here. But I don't want to do that because that's prime real estate. I'll put some solar panels up there and we'll be golden for electricity. The other choice is you put the dinghy on the back of the boat on what's the swim platform. And it's a teak swim platform. Goes on the back of the boat. It's about 20 one inches wide and mounts on there with some stainless steel brackets and support struts and uh, looks real nice. We're going to be mounting that. What a lot of people do is they take their dinghy and they put it on the back of the trawler, kind of prop it up on its side. There are davit systems, commercial davit systems, things, retail things you can buy, weaver systems, snap davits, and a variety of other things that you could put on there to make that possible. You, you, you put the dinghy on there and you kind of raise it up and stand it on the stern of the boat on the swim platform against the transom. I don't like the idea of putting my ultralight dinghy on the transom of the boat up on the swim platform. I think it's gonna damage the dinghy over time. And uh, I just don't think it's the way to put it on, on this boat. And I actually, I think, I think we can do something that no one else has done before and done well. I think this little ship needs a set of dinghy davits to raise the dinghy out of the water at the stern of the boat and it'll be suspended up there when it's not in use, just like a lifeboat, and it'll be put back in the water when it's gonna be used. And the issue is you gotta have some type of davit system, a crane system to raise this thing up and down. You can look at it online, they're called dinghy davits, D-A-V-I-T-S. Dinghy davits are normally made out of stainless steel or maybe aluminum, they can cost upwards of a thousand two thousand dollars or more and as i've worked with kusa board and various composite products on my boat i've gotten more and more confidence about what they might be capable of doing and how they might be used in different applications things that you never thought of before no one would ever think to build a set of marine plywood davits for your boat why it's too heavy marine plywood is not going to last it it you know, the strength to weight ratio is just not there. Uh, it's not waterproof. And uh, you build it out of metal. You wouldn't build it out of marine plywood. But you could build it out of composite materials. If you take the CUSA board 
And using fiberglass and epoxy, I believe you can construct a pair. And in fact, uh, spoiler alert, somebody's already done this and I got the idea from them. They did it using some very lightweight uh, wood and uh, composites and epoxy and they built a, a, a pair of these. That's what gave me the idea. We're gonna do it on a bigger scale and uh, maybe a little different design. Over several Boatworks live streams, I've talked about the design and the parameters of the dinghy davits that I'm going to construct using Kusa board and epoxy. There are two key design parameters that we have to keep in mind. The first one is how long do the dinghy arms have to extend from the transom of the boat in order to accommodate a dinghy? And there's a formula for this. The beam of the dinghy divided by two plus 10%. This is how long the davit arms have to extend. The second design parameter is the dinghy davits have to be able to be shortened. Every inch counts and the dinghy davits have to be able to be taken apart in order for the boat to be stored when it's out of the water. My solution to this was to create a dinghy davit base and a dinghy davit arm that attached to the base but could be removed at a later date for storage. The whole thing would be constructed using a grid work inside the base and the arms of the davits. They would be made out of half inch Kusa board. If you're not familiar with this product, be sure to check out my Kusa board and composites playlist so you can get an idea of its capabilities. To reinforce it, I would apply seven ounce fiberglass cloth to each side of the Kusa board. For the entire project, it used about a half a sheet of Kusa board. Kusa board is a marine plywood substitute. It's made of a rigid polyurethane foam that's impregnated with fiberglass weaving. It can be worked using normal woodworking tools, but you need to be aware that the particles it puts off from the cutting and the grinding, but those can be really harmful to your health. You need to make sure you wear proper protective gear. In addition, I find that Kusa board tends to wear out my saw blades. So I set aside my blades and I have particular ones that I use and reuse to cut the Kusa board. Today I'm beginning to build the internal structure of the composite dinghy davits. The dinghy davits are comprised of three pieces. The first one is the base. This is what attaches to the deck at the stern of the boat. Then there is the lower arm. The lower arm attaches to the base. And then there's the upper arm. This is the part that sticks out over the water. And the upper arm bolts to the lower arm. First thing I do is I have to cover each side of the Kusa board with about seven ounces of fiberglass biaxial cloth. This will add some rigidity to the Kusa board, kind of protect the exterior, and it'll make it a lot stiffer. Assembling the grid work for the lower and upper arm is just a matter of cutting the pieces, getting them to fit together, then epoxying them in place. They're sanding after each go around, trying to make sure that everything is kind of square and the joints are looking good. Initial assembly is done using the screw and glue method. I use the drywall screws to align everything and then I go back and put epoxy into the joints with epoxy fillets. The base plate for each davit is made from laminating successive layers of half inch Kusa board into one block, which is then through bolted and further epoxied into the lower arm. The work is tedious, but I can begin to see it coming together. a lot of sanding but it feels like we're really starting to make progress on these composite dinghy davits. I've got the basic shapes of the upper arms and now the base is completed and I have to attach a couple pieces of hardware that will not be accessible once I totally enclose the bases or the arms when everything is kind of epoxy together, well, these pieces of hardware, they have to already be bolted in place. This means that I have to kind of do a little bit of finishing where I'm actually mounting them so that I can go back later on and begin the finishing, sanding, and painting process that's gonna to happen to the dinghy davits. We've got two bases that are done. We're gonna be mounting a cleat right here, another one right there. Then they've got to be enclosed with the side panel and everything's got to be routed 
and kind of filled in and ready to go. Now outside, I've got to do a guide coat on the finished upper arms so that I can begin to see where they need a little bit of, I don't know, more fairing just to kind of make them look extra good. This process is multi-step, multi-stage. Anything I can do to show me the imperfections on the surface of the CUSA board will help me later on when it comes time for final priming and painting. With the hardware installed, now it's time to start beginning the finishing process for the base and the arms. But real quick, I realized there's a problem. I'm in the process of kind of dry fitting. And the problem is that the width of the space between the base, top of the base, is about two inches. On one, it's two inches wide. On the other, it's one and 15 sixteenths inches wide. But the width of the arm that goes inside that slot on one of them is two inches and one eighth. And on another one, it's two inches and one quarter. So basically what that means is that the upper arms are too wide to fit in the slots of the dinghy davit bases. The only solution is to make the arms thinner by about one sixteenth, couple sixteenths. Seems like sanding would be the way to do this it, since it's such a small amount of material. And that's not the only issue. Once everything fits inside the slot, now it's a matter of getting the perfect angle so the upper arm rests fully on the bottom arm. And there's only one way to do that. It's time for a new tool. We call this one Der Winkel. Yeah, das is the Winkel. It's a digital angle finder. With a high degree of accuracy, it tells us exactly how much our angles are off so I can carefully sand off just enough material. All right, we're gonna be using this product here. This is a total boat fairing compound. It's a two-part mix here, a part A and a part B. And you mix the two together. Why are we doing this? What we're going to do is be filling in the imperfections in the CUSA board, especially from my assembly, seams and things that I got wrong. Most of that's been filled in already with a high density filler. But what we want to do now, this is for the finishing process. We're going to use this fairing compound. It sands down real nice and should give us a nice smooth finish. And uh, we can kind of fill in all of the problems that are on the CUSA board here. I used this product before when I did the end caps for the rubber rail. It came out really well. So we'll go ahead and continue using it. This the fairing process will probably take about two coats. You do one coat, you let it cure and dry, and then you come back, sand it. And we might do another coat after that, make sure we get everything, make sure there's no spots we missed. And eventually, once we've got it to the point where it has a really good surface, we'll be ready to prime and paint. I talked about this in one of my other videos. The secret to keeping your paint cans clean and proper for like touch-ups and stuff, especially if you're going to be using over a period of time, you don't want the paint to go bad. The secret is using a ten penny nail and then you punch little holes in the rim here. I usually do like the four quadrants, four or five. And then the, any paint that gets inside the lip here, well it'll drain down inside. And uh, keep your lip nice and clean so that uh, you get a good seal every time. And basically, the paint will last longer. The final step of building the dinghy davits is to install all the hardware, a little winch, a cam cleat, and some backing plates for the bolts that'll hold the two arms together. Finally, a moment of completion. It's time to test this out. This is the moment of truth. I don't know if this is going to work. <laughs> I hope it doesn't break. See? Mm -hmm. 
And this is it's sheared right off there. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's not good. Oh, this is terrible. This is not good. That means that bond's not strong enough. Now I can appreciate that if you've been watching this video, you probably feel like you just wasted your time all to watch a project fail before your very eyes. Now you can imagine how I feel several hundred hours into this project and a several hundred dollars more just trying to make it work. I went back and I repaired the base and tried to reinforce it with some stainless steel, but on a second attempt, it only broke again. All this led me to realize a little too late that Kusa board is not the material to be trying to make a pair of dinghy davits. The forces on the base of the dinghy davits are just too much. The base has to be integral to the davit itself. I made one of the fundamental amateur boat building and boat restoration mistakes. Uh all right, so follow me here because I'm only going to go through this once. What we're going to do is we're going to take the flux capacitor with these settings. We're going to run it through a half capacity Fluter Schneegen valve. And then at 0.02513%, we use the dilithium crystals, which brings us back to the Wade Johnson effect. I haven't invented that yet, but I'm working on it. And then from there, we're going to get to our energy source. It's going to power our boat. It'll be amazing and super economical. Did you get that? Does that make sense? You know, sometimes I'll get emails from amateur boat restorers and they'll want to know if they can take their tuna boat and add some solar powered, convert to electricity, and then go ahead and run a compressed air engine to make their boat some sort of ultra eco-friendly, quasi industrial fishing boat. And I gotta say, what are you, some type of mad scientist? I always tell people, go ahead and leave the invention to the airship captains and stick with just doing a normal, regular boat restoration. A sure way to go bankrupt is to try and do some experimental, never tried before, electrical, mechanical conversion to your boat. You might think you're some sort of Da Vinci, but let's be honest. You have to have really deep pockets to do some sort of experimental boat building. I try to tell people, just stick with what works. It'll ensure that your boat restoration or boat building goes smoothly. I'm gonna tell you this project was a real gut punch. I started thinking about what would it cost to have someone fabricate my dinghy davits out of aluminum using my same design. What was that gonna cost me? It was really kind of depressing, but you gotta get back up on the horse. And wouldn't you know it, after some careful searching on Craigslist, I found a pair of forged aluminum dinghy davits for $50. But hey, that's a story for another episode. I hope you enjoyed your time in the shop. I want to thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Stay motivated. If you like these videos, please hit the subscribe button. These videos would not be possible without your support.